Uh, so I first want to acknowledge my co-authors on this project, uh, Sophia Alondi, who's a co-first author, uh, my advisor, Fenrik Freiwalds, uh, others in the Freiwalds lab that helped out with animal training and data collection for the project, uh, and our various funding sources. So as humans, we have a rather sophisticated ability to understand and predict the behavior of other people, and we do so based on uh, their internal mental states, as well as our knowledge about aspects of their personality, so personality traits and personal history. And these abilities are thought to be supported by a distributed set of brain regions across association cortex, including the temporoparietal junction, uh, precuneus and posterior cingulate cortex, and several regions in the medial prefrontal cortex. Uh, these regions fall within a network known as the default mode network or apex network. And in addition to responding to a range of high level social cognition tasks, these regions appear to be involved in storing information about familiar people. Um, so if you ask humans in a scanner to think about specific familiar people, uh, spatial activity patterns in these regions can be used to de uh, decode which person they're thinking about. And importantly, uh, these regions don't comprise the entire default mode network, uh, but rather constitute a subset thereof. Um, so uh, in humans, based on functional connectivity and task data, you can find uh, multiple interdigitated subnetworks of the DMN, uh, one of which is involved in social cognition, uh, the other which has been uh, argued to be specialized for episodic uh, recall, uh, and by others to be specialized for spatial reasoning or navigation. So in this talk, I'd like to discuss the evolution uh, of this specialized system for, for social cognition uh, in humans. So in terms of the default mode network, uh, studies of functional and anatomical connectivity have suggested that default mode networks exist across a range of mammals. They've been found in macaques. They've also been found in rodents, uh, both rats and mice, which uh, diverged from us uh, over 80 million years ago. That said, it's much less clear whether these regions in non-humans play any role in social cognitive function uh, or whether there's anything like uh, socially specialized uh, subregions or a subnetwork within the default mode network in non-humans. So I'm gonna ask this question by studying macaques. Uh, we do so because macaques are a social species. Uh, they recognize others based on their faces and voices and the extent to which they have human-like high-level social cognition uh, is, is debated and has been debated for the past four decades or so. Uh, but at least in my mind, there's compelling evidence that they at least understand uh, basic mental states of, of other primates, things like percepts and desires, and make action predictions based on those. So we can imagine various hypotheses about uh, social specialization within the DMN in macaques or in a common ancestor. So uh, one possibility is that there's no specialization, so that these animals have a default mode network, um, but they don't have socially specialized regions within that. So at the other extreme, we can imagine that macaques might have a fully human-like uh, social subnetwork of the default mode network. And we can imagine a, a range of possibilities in between in which uh, maybe one or, or several subregions of the DMN have begun to um, evolve social, socially specialized components, um, but they haven't propagated throughout uh, the full network. So we're going to test this using macaque fMRI. Uh, this is a powerful method, as uh, Alessandro mentioned, uh, for sort of searching for specific functional signatures across the entire macaque brain. Uh, however, macaque fMRI isn't particularly suited for studying uh, sort of naturalistic social interaction or social behavior in monkeys. Uh, you know, you have monkeys in a small tube, head fixed, looking at a screen. Um, that being said, what we can do relatively easily with macaque fMRI is have them fixate and show them images, uh, images of faces and non-faces. So here we're going to capitalize on the fact that uh, in humans, these regions don't just seem to uh, respond to high-level social cognition tasks, but also, uh, as it turns out, respond when you just perceive an image of a familiar face relative to an unfamiliar face or a familiar uh, or, or a non-face object. So specifically, we showed macaques uh, six categories of images, uh, personally familiar faces and objects. So these are uh, faces and objects that the macaque has personally uh, experienced with and interact with, interacted with, uh, visually familiar faces and objects. So these are uh, faces and objects that the macaque has no personal familiarity with, uh, but they've seen the specific images before, and unfamiliar images uh, which the macaque has never seen before. And um, this was data uh, collected by uh, my co-author uh, Sophia Lundy as part of her graduate thesis. All right, so when we compare responses to faces and objects um, in macaques, this is showing an example from one monkey, and we see sort of the expected set of regions uh, along the temporal lobe following a progression uh, or a hierarchical progression from posterior to anterior parts of the of temporal cortex. We also see uh, the sort of well-known regions of lateral frontal cortex that respond to faces in the macaque, uh, POPV and PA. 
When we look on the medial surface, uh, we also see a set of regions within medial prefrontal cortex that respond to faces over objects. Um, and we sort of see what looks like an alternation of face preferring and non preferring domains of frontal cortex along a dorsal to ventral axis. So this is in one monkey. Uh, if I zoom in on the MPFC uh, and look at results in the other animals, we see a consistent result in the second animal, uh, the third animal, and the fourth animal that we scanned. Okay, so, so we've identified a set of regions in medial prefrontal cortex that appear to have some social specialization in that they respond to faces over objects. We then wanted to compare uh, the anatomical and functional properties of these areas to what we know about corresponding social cognition areas in humans. Um, so we'll do so by comparing their anatomical organization the response profile across multiple categories, and their functional connectivity in the resting state. So in terms of anatomical organization, there's sort of a, immediately a striking parallel with the organization that's been observed uh, for human social cognition regions, which is that in both, in, in both species, you see this uh, sort of alternation of socially preferring and non-preferring domains across the dorsal to ventral axis in MPFC. We next wanted to ask, you know, is, is this a pattern that we're sort of reading into the data uh, into a noisy response, or is that actually a re reliable pattern of response in our data? So to do so, we split our data in half. Uh, in each animal and hemisphere, we can define at least three uh, subregions of NPFC that respond to faces over objects. So we define the peak coordinates of those regions and the peak coordinates or the coordinates of two non-face preferring areas between those three regions, then draw splines between those coordinates and we extract responses to uh, faces versus objects in left out data. And this is what we see uh, in the left hemisphere in our left out data, we see a consistent uh, alternation between face preferring and non-preferring zones of MPFC uh, and a similar pattern in the right hemisphere. So this pattern of alternation appears to be a reliable pattern in our data, both across halves of the data, across hemispheres and across animals. All right, we next wanna ask about the response uh, profile across multiple conditions in the experiment. And our expectations from human research are one, uh, that we'll see a response to familiar faces over unfamiliar faces, and two, that we'll see a deactivation to non-preferred stimulus categories, uh, namely objects. And this is something that's been observed um, in prior stu human studies focusing on uh, socially responsive regions of MPFC. This is an example from a social cognition task, um, but also is characteristic of uh, other regions in the default mode network that they tend to deactivate relative to baseline to non-preferred stimulus categories. All right, so to do so, we do a leave one run out ROI analysis. So we take n minus one of our runs, um, extract the top 5% of face responsive voxels within a search space, and then uh, extract the responses uh, of that region across categories in the left out run to avoid a non-independence error. And uh, I'll first show you what this looks like for uh, regions of temporal cortex. Uh, so this is a search space uh, consisting of area TEO, which contains face area ML. When we apply this analysis to this region, uh, this is what you see. So you see a strong response to all the face conditions over objects, about a 4% signal change dynamic range, and a slight preference for familiar faces. Okay, we'll now look in MPFC. So we defined three search spaces for MPFC, uh, spanning ventral to dorsal MPFC, defined based on Broadman areas. When we extract responses in ventral PFC, uh, this is the pattern we see. So uh, the strongest response is to familiar faces, um, sort of a, a low to baseline response for unfamiliar faces, and a deactivation to objects. And we can test the face and familiarity effects using a linear mixed model uh, with animal included as a random effect. We find that these are both highly significant. In uh, middle medial prefrontal cortex, we see a very similar pattern of results. And in dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, we see a similar pattern, uh, although somewhat weaker and an overall uh, deactivation relative to baseline. Uh, so this suggests that these socially preferring regions in macaque and PFC have somewhat similar uh, functional profile to corresponding, in re uh, corresponding regions in humans in that they prefer familiar to unfamiliar faces and deactivate to objects relative to baseline. All right, lastly, we're gonna look at the resting state functional connectivity of these regions in macaques. So based on human data, we expect that these regions should be functionally connected to other parts of the default mode network. Um, and in human data, you also see uh, different patterns of functional connectivity for uh, socially preferring and non-preferring regions within NPFC. So you see a different pattern of connectivity within the default mode network. All right, so uh, we'll first look at uh, the pattern of functional connectivity for a ventral face preferring seed in macaque NPFC. And this is the pattern we get. So you see a uh, clearly default mode network like pattern of functional connectivity, including other regions in the medial prefrontal cortex, 
posterior cingulate cortex, parahippocampal gyrus, dorsal STS, uh, and an intriguingly TPJ-like region of lateral parietal cortex in Broadman area 7A. And so when we then look at functional connectivity of uh, an adjacent non-socially preferring region of MPFC, we again see a pattern uh, that looks much like the default bone network, um, but this pattern doesn't differ uh, significantly or, or you know, substantively from the pattern that we saw from the socially preferring seed. Um, so we find that these regions of MPFC do uh, fall within the default mode network in terms of functional connectivity, uh, but we don't find any evidence of uh, distinct subnetworks within the DMN uh, in other parts of the, the default network in macaques, unlike in humans. All right, so to summarize, we've identified a set of uh, socially preferring subregions in macaque and PFC. Uh, we find that these regions are similar to corresponding human areas in terms of anatomical organization, response profile across multiple categories, and resting state functional connectivity. And getting back to our hypotheses, uh, these results we think rule out the hypothesis of no specialization. They indicate that there is some, uh, some early social specialization in the macaque. They're most consistent with a hypothesis of partial specialization in that we only find this within MPFC, not in other parts of the default mode network. Um, and we don't see evidence for uh, distinct subnetworks of the default mode network throughout association cortex. Um, that being said, we can't rule out the possibility of a fully human-like uh, default uh, or social subnetwork of the DMN. Um, it's possible that we might find this with uh, something like a more active social interaction or social cognition task, uh, or with uh, more sensitive methods like electrophysiology. All right, thanks for listening, and um, I'm happy to take questions. All right, thank you very much, Ben. Again, uh, a lot of applause for you. And uh, again, on behalf of all everyone, uh, all the attendees, uh, very beautiful talk and and very clear. Um, again, I'm while I'm waiting for the questions. Um, so I had the first, let's say, I mean, again, very beautiful technique that you can, you know, as you said, like really visualize the activity of whole brain uh, using this fMRI technique. Um, one question that comes to mind is, can you can you think of, uh, let's say, a behavior task where you could, and also other techniques where you could also test the causality of, of these networks, like for, for social behavior? Have you thought about, or is, is that in your plan, let's say? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I tend to think that these regions would be involved in social decision-making tasks. Uh, so various people, you know, various groups have implemented uh, sort of economic gain tasks uh, with non-human primates. Um, there's a question as to to what extent those tasks are, are really sort of eliciting social cognition or sort of social inferences in monkeys. Um, but insofar as they are, or insofar as you can design them such that they are, maybe you know have another monkey present in the room with the, the monkey recording. I, I would expect these these regions to be involved in that sort of task. Um, but yeah, it's it's a great question and, and something that we're actively thinking about. Yeah, yeah, I was a bit thinking in those lines. For example, now I guess the group of uh, Michael Brecht, uh, they are they are doing uh, like tasks for for rats, I think, and then they are also studying, let's say, social behaviors, and uh, like approaching uh, to rats, or I think it's in rats if I'm not mistaken. They're approaching to different rats to each other while they are tracking all their interactions to each other, and then while they're recording your activity from, from regions that again, they think they might be involved in, in social behaviors and they have beautiful data in, in that. And again, I guess, thanks to the technologies that you also heard in, in about uh, like, well, actually in, in this conference about all these pose estimations, automated, automated pose estimations and so on. Again, if, if one could imagine, as you said, rather than just images, bring in other monkeys and then try to somehow look at those interactions would be, would be, I think, amazing. I do not see any questions in the Q&A.